I'm going to give you a brief demonstration uh, of our intraoral respiration monitor. So um, without further ado, um, I'm going to uh, give you a demonstration. So what I'm going to be doing is piping data, sensor data, from the device uh, onto my computer, uh, onto a web interface uh, website, uh, where you'll be able to see a time series graph of that data. Uh, and then um, we'll kind of go over the data. Um, it's, uh, it's really easy to um, kind of eyeball, to get an idea of, um, uh, an intuitive idea of how the sensor data corresponds to um, the mechanical uh, motions of my uh, breathing in and out. So, uh, cheers. There we go. I have to wear this all day long. Okay. So, there we see our uh, web interface. Um, and I'm going to have some spikes and data. So I'm going to tear this off really briefly. Okay, so um, a couple different things. Uh, first, probably most conspicuously, is this animated lung. So the uh, lung is animated by the um, air pressure sensor uh, reading. So as I'm breathing in and out, um, the lung animation will expand and contract. Um, as I'm breathing, it tracks my breathing. Uh, so uh, the time series graph uh, above that, uh, you can see labels for all the different uh, sensor data and uh, color codes. So uh, air pressure, uh, pressure delta, change in pressure over time, uh, humidity, air temperature, skin temperature, uh, skin temperature delta, and device temperature. Um, so most of the stuff is really easy to just eyeball. You can kind of just see things changing in real time um, as I'm breathing. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to breathe for a little bit uh, with my mouth closed through my nose uh, and then I'm going to switch over to breathing through the mouth and we'll just um, discuss the data a little bit. Now, as I'm sure you noticed, um, when my mouth is closed, uh, air pressure tracks respiration really well. And uh, when my mouth is open, uh, skin temperature, interior skin temperature, uh, tracks respiration really well, um, which is a good thing because we need both. Uh, any uh, respiration monitor is going to be able to, is going to have to be uh, effective both uh, when people are breathing through their mouth and when they're just breathing through their nose. Uh, so, brief explanation, um, the, uh, the nose is a constricted airway, so when you're breathing in and out, uh, a lot of pressure builds um, inside your mouth, so it's all connected. Um, and that's why you get a really good uh, correlation from the air pressure sensor. 
uh, and when your mouth is open, um, it's a really big entryway, so there's not as much of a pressure buildup, not as much of a pressure differential. Uh, but there is a lot of air moving back and forth, uh, air that's not the same temperature uh, as the inside of your body. Uh, so as the cool air um, enters your, your mouth, uh, passes the back of your throat, uh, it cools your skin down, and we're able to detect that, which is why it tracks it so well. Uh, and then when you breathe out, it, the skin warms back up again, and you see that too. So uh, between those two values, uh, we're able to track respiration really well with this device. It, it works really well. Uh, so now for the fun part. So now that we have an idea of how this thing works, uh, we're going to uh, train a neural network using data sampled um, from the device. Uh, and we're going to train a classifier for inhalation and exhalation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press down on the green button when I am in the process of inhaling. So that means that as long as that button is pressed down, um, whatever data is getting piped into the uh, website uh, is going to be counted as inhalation data. And when I'm pressing down on the exhalation button, any data that's passing into the site uh, is going to be considered exhalation uh, data. And we basically, uh, those are the two input nodes for the neural network. Um, and then uh, I think in this case, we cheat a little bit, single output node. So it's kind of like uh, binary uh, on inhalation and um, basically the uh, inverse is considered exhalation. Um, but it would work just as well if it was a two output node. So without further ado. Okay. Oh, okay. Good thing. There we go. Okay. Oh, after that. So as you can see, hopefully just by comparing it to the animation of the lung, um, the uh, outputs output, so of the neural network um, do in fact track respiration really well. Um, and I just get the uh, percentile readouts. Um, the, uh, the green obviously uh, corresponds to inhalation, the yellow to exhalation. Um, so beyond just using the neural network for this demo, um, one of the point of putting this material out, of doing these, these tutorials, uh, is to open source uh, as much of the work that we've done at the Matter Lab as possible. Uh, so this little uh, web interface um, is on GitHub. In fact, it's a GitHub site. Uh, and you can set up your own version of it very easily. It just takes a couple of clicks. You just uh, fork the GitHub repo and set it up as a GitHub site. 
uh, and you can toy around with it, uh, hack it, and do whatever you like, uh, put it to whatever sort of use uh, you see fit. Um, you can even build one of these guys um, and connect to it the same way that I'm doing right now. Uh, it's web Bluetooth, so it will connect to any Bluetooth device, and you could certainly emulate this kind of data or change parameters to suit your needs. Um, well, let's see. While we're at it, let's make sure that I'm, okay, there we are. Uh, I'm going to talk to you um, a little bit more about how we uh, built this thing, in case you're interested. Um, so this is uh, made custom for me. This is for my knot. Um, and the way that it became for my knot uh, is the same way that uh, an orthodontist or a dentist would make uh, an actual retainer for someone. So um, this right here is a uh, dental tray. So you would put um, alginate on the dental tray, put it on your mouth an impression. Uh, the alginate solidifies into a mold uh, and then um, you pour resin, or actually in my case, I just use Bondo. Um, you pour some kind of hard material that's heat resistant um, into the mold formed by the alginate in the dental tray. Um, and then you use this basically uh, as a um, as a positive mold uh, for forming the retainer. So let's see. This right here, it's clear, so I'm not sure pull that on video. Um, this is a piece of specialty uh, orthodontic thermoplastic. Uh, you can get it on eBay or Amazon. And uh, what I did essentially is I just took um, I took this and I laid it on top of my uh, dental impression, my positive dental impression, and I put it in an oven and I allowed the thermoplastic to melt and then every few minutes I would press it um, around the, the positive dental impression. Uh, and orthodontist has a, a special equipment, um, like a vacuum kilns and that kind of thing, I, I didn't know about those, uh, which is probably why it doesn't really sound like the way that Retainer that or the donuts put together would sound like. That's okay. These are prototypes. Uh, anyway, here's a couple. Uh, so this is this is what you would get as a result of that process. So just a little clear piece of plastic, like that. Here's another one. That's what is produced uh, by forming that uh, specialty thermoplastic around the Bondo positive uh, dental impression. And um, here are some electronics from, um, I went through a bunch of these, these are difficult to make. Um, these are these battery and, and sensors uh, and little uh, main PCB from the activity tracker. Uh, so the air pressure sensor was kind of tricky uh, because it needs um, access to air. <laughs> Uh, in an environment which has lots of water uh, and other stuff that you don't want messing around with electronics. Um, so basically uh, what was necessary was um, to have some kind of barrier between the air pressure sensor and the, uh, and the mouth um, that was breathable but waterproof, um, or at least to a, a degree that would make the uh, prototype successful. Uh, so there, there are some very kind of specialized ways of going about this, uh, but what uh, I ended up doing was using Tyvek, uh, which is a material used in hazmat suits and also uh, home insulation actually. Uh, it's super lightweight uh, and it's uh, waterproof but also breathable. Um, I used that and I also used uh, surgical tape, um, which is also waterproof but breathable and a combination of those two to try to get something that would uh, st structural integrity. Uh, and that's it for now. Thanks.